Hello guys, in this video we are going to do this problem which is from Pathfinder chapter 2 which is Newton's laws of motion and from check your understanding question number 12. You can look at it once uh, before seeing the solution. So yeah, let's begin. In this problem we have said that a cobweb thread of negligible relaxed length is stretched between point A and B on two opposite walls as shown in the figure. In this state, the thread makes an angle theta with the horizontal and its length at force constant are L and K respectively. A spider of mass m crawls gradually from end to be on this thread, representing the horizontal axis, horizontal by x axis, and the vertical by y axis at the point A as the origin. Find the equation of path followed by the spider, assuming that the thread obeys Hooke's law. Okay, so uh, we can simply ba bash this question to find the uh, trajectory, but uh, bashing would take a lot of time, and uh, a few observations at the start of the problem before studying the main problem would help us a lot. So uh, the first observation is, uh, let's say the uh, particle, the spider is at a general point on the thread, it's at a point Q, let's say. So yeah, uh, the force on it due to the chord PQ will be K times root of X square plus Y square, where X and Y are its coordinates, uh, Y is the uh, uh, distance along Y axis and X is the distance along X axis. So the f uh, force along the thread will be K root X square plus Y square. Now let us consider its components in the y-axis and the x-axis to be fx, fy and fx respectively. So what we can see from here is fy will be equal to k root x square plus y square multiplied by y upon root of x square plus y square by simple trigonometry. So, uh, and fy will, will get as ky and fx will get as kx. So what we observe here, very important observation is that uh, the stretch or the force along x-axis or y-axis is the distance stretched by the um, chord along that axis. So the fx would be simply here fx and fy will be simply fy. So yeah, this observation will be used a lot in the forward uh, prevailing parts. So yeah. the second observation is now as uh, as we have said as I have said that the uh, it is moved gradually from point A to B. So at each point it will be at the static it will be at static equilibrium so le uh, if we put at any uh, we can put it at any general point on the thread in its original state and and the position it will be at will be the same as if it is moving from point a to b so uh, let's say we put it at point g here okay and uh, let's say it uh, reach out reaches point h in equilibrium state okay so uh first of all what we can uh, let's assume that e the distance of g was ml from e and 1 minus m times l from f and uh, let the spring constant of eg will be k1 and that of gf be k2 so the relation we get between k1 k2 and k is k1 times ml equals to k2 times 1 minus m times l equals to k times l right so from here we get that k1 equals to k over m and k2 equals to k over 1 minus m right so let uh, and at point h it will be at static equilibrium so considering its equilibrium at in the horizontal direction we get that k1 x1 equals to k2 x2 now the uh, tension along x-axis and y-axis uh, we uh, took it from the first observation. So from here what we get is k1 equals to k over m times x1 equals to k over 1 minus m times x2. From here x1 over x2 equals to m by 1 minus m. So what we can observe from here is that this length upon this length is the same as this length upon this length which implies that that the point h is directly below point g so uh, this is a very important observation which will again use in for uh, forward parts so uh, now we have two observations and uh, we'll now use it in the original problem so here Let's assume that again uh, it is placed at a point G and it comes down to a point H 
and the distance of point G from E is ML and from the other end it is 1 minus M times L and the string constants are K1 and K2 respectively. So from here we can observe that the X coordinate of the uh, spider will simply be in this case ML cos theta because it is uh, not moving horizontally even if we place it at G so at H it is X is simply equal to ML cos theta. Now for the y coordinate, uh, for now we'll consider we'll need to consider the vertical equilibrium. So uh, here the force on the force on the particle in the y directions are mg a downward force and the k1 y plus k2 times l sine theta plus y and uh, k2 times l sine theta plus y comes from the second string and this extension is which comes out to be L sin theta plus y. Observe that here y uh, here y is the modulus of the y coordinate. In the end, we will have to substitute y for minus y because we have taken y in the downward direction. Okay. So, equating uh, this to mg, we get k1 y plus k2 times L sin theta plus y equals to mg. So we get that k over m times y plus k by 1 minus m times l sin theta plus y equals to mg. So simplifying it some more, we get that y by m plus l sin theta plus y by 1 minus m equals to mg by k and so uh, y times 1 by m times 1 minus m equals to mg by k minus l sin theta over 1 minus m oh i have taken two m same so i'll just represent the mass by capital m, m here capital mg so from here we get y equals to m times 1 minus m multiplied by mg by k minus l sin theta over 1 minus small m. And here we know that we can get m from this relation in terms of x. So we will get the equation of trajectory as y equals to m is x by l cos theta into 1 minus x by l cos theta multiplied by mg by k minus l sin theta over 1 minus x by l cos theta. Now simplifying this, I won't get into the calculations, I'll simply write the answer we in the end we get y equals to minus x tan theta minus mg x over k l cos theta plus mg x square by k l square cos square theta so yeah and uh, as i said before we have to uh, substitute the y for minus y because we have taken y in the downward direction. So substituting y for minus y, uh, this minus sign becomes plus. And yeah, this is the final equation of trajectory we are required to find. Thank you.